Hey there everyone, Dr. Beth Westy here. Okay, I hope I'm doing this in the event page. Sometimes when Facebook updates things, it takes me a minute to reacquaint myself with exactly where to go live <laughs> in the event versus just in the page. Um, so I'm really excited to talk to everyone about and dive into a lot of this nutrition for women. Um, this is going to be really, really specific on uh, nutrition for your cycle, for your hormones, everything else. So first off, as we get started, <laughs> yay, Susan, you're so funny. <laughs> All right. So first off, as we get started here, if you have questions as I go through this, cause I'm going to just throw out a ton of info at you, like blah. If you're like, whoa, 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 lady, what do you mean? I'm supposed to eat more carbs. How the heck does that work? comment below, that type of a thing. I'm also at the end, I'm going to put a link where you can schedule a call with me. Um, I do that. Sometimes people think it's weird. They're like, I didn't really think that that was a thing or I didn't know I could really talk to you. And I'm like, yes, because there's so much information out there. Hi, Sheila. That's just not meant for women, right? There, there's so much, an abundance of info that is not meant for women, for the female body. And it makes me crazy. So sometimes as you're trying to process your thoughts and as you're trying to kind of download this new information, it's important that you talk it through. It's important that you sort of get a different idea about how to eat for your body, how to work with your hormones and everything else. Um, so yeah, so please leave questions below. I'll put that link below and I'll, I'll remind you guys at the end too that you can absolutely schedule a call and we can chat about whatever. I promise I've heard it before. I promise it's not going to be new information. I promise. <laughs> um, you're not going to say anything to me that no one has said before, right? And there's a lot, usually a lot of women that you have more than one thing going on, right? Uh, like you've got um, a lot of stress and you have thyroid issues. It's really important that you address both things and that you do different things for both of those. But then what does that look like together in combination, right? Oh, that's where the frustration sets in. That's where the trouble comes in terms of I want, I'm eating healthy, but nothing's happening. I'm eating really healthy and I'm going to the gym. I got this trainer. I love my trainer. My trainer's fantastic, but what the heck? The scale has not budged and I, I'm not seeing any difference or any different type of result. So those are really important things to really note and everything else. So as I do these videos, a little bit about me. Um, I am a chiropractor, uh, by training. I'm certified in acupuncture and Eastern medicine. Um, my passion is women's health and nutrition and just helping women around this. I am married. I have three children. So if you see me kind of look around for this, like I literally have, look at this. My kid just wrote me a note, like, cause he's standing right here cause he wants something. No, no, Hi. nobody. Mm. All right, go on. <laughs> Anyway, oh, cause this is real life, right? So the other thing when I talk about nutrition is <laughs> my dog, she like, yes. Yeah, spa upstairs, spa was naughty today. He got onto the counter and ate pork. Mm -hmm. Just got a big old pork bone and just helped himself and was like, what? Mm, ooh. <laughs> um, Cheryl, you're excited to start the 12 week program. Yes, Cheryl, yay. I'm excited too. Um, so, and, and speaking of the, so the 12 week program that I have, that's the nutrition, it's a meal guide, grocery list, tons of resources, help, and then guidance one-on-one -on -one with me. Um, and there's so much more of it too, that goes into it too, where I really help take you through all of this information and sort of like spoon feed it to you. It's plug and play, plug and play. And the amazing thing is, is that um, it's something that you can incorporate into your life and lifestyle. That's one of the biggest things that I take away from it. There's no way that you're going to be able to make nutrition changes and get be successful with it if it's not going to work for your life. So there's a lot of things that we shift and change for each person specifically because um, that, that means it's going to work and it's going to keep working. So that's the special magic sauce. Um, other side, let's see, other things about me. What other things do you need to know about me before we get started? Um, I'm on Instagram. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram, I do some Instagram stories. That's where I try and be really funny in case you didn't know my Instagram stories. Um, I grew up on a goat farm. I grew up milking goats. I'm an athlete. Um, I played volleyball and basketball and, 
um, high school and volleyball in college. And I now play for the Minnesota Vixen, which is a professional full tackle women's football team. I'm a tight end. It's my first year, so I'm, I'm okay at it right now. <laughs> but I'm super competitive, so I'm going to be really good. But it's football, so it's a, it's a little more aggressive than the volleyball, right? Anyway, um, so yes, uh, other things. So I'm going to go through this information in detail and really dive in. Again, you guys have questions, put them below. You're not going to, don't, don't wait on it because as I go into more and more and more of this information, um, I want you to kind of keep processing, you know, mentally. And, and the biggest thing that I love seeing is, is the light bulb go off in people's mind when they're like, oh my God, that makes so much sense. Oh my gosh, no wonder why I've been struggling. Oh, right. Cause it's not you, you know, it, it's, it's just very, very, um, you know, it's very different when it's, when you're like, oh, this is the right thing for me. Here we go. Uh, this is going to work with my body. Um, my book, The Female Fat Solution, I do cover a lot of this in my book, which is on Amazon. Um, and I do a lot of videos and stuff on uh, on subject matter from this. So that they're on my YouTube channel if you don't want to scroll all the way through Facebook. And then I have a podcast, The Female Health Solution, where I do interviews with people as well as diving into subjects even more and in a different way than in my book. Um, so you can go check that out too. So when we talk about nutrition, and I actually spent the entire first chapter of my book on this, I'm going to like center myself before I start diving into this topic because it makes me crazy pants and I start sweating. Like I start sweating because it makes me so angry. Seriously. It is the history of nutrition and what women are told to eat, how we are told to eat. Um, all these recommendations out there. Okay. So just Blanket statement, the nutrition information that you come across and that you see everywhere and that's posted in articles and research that's done on this. Oh, and this was proved to be this, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. It's all done on men. It's all done on men. Women are not included in studies, especially for nutrition or performance or any other, and anything like that. They're not even included in studies for pharmaceuticals. So I'll give you a history of pharmaceutical studies. Um, up until 1993, which isn't that long ago, right? 93, women were not allowed to be a part of pharmaceutical studies. So any medication that you took before that time, and even some now, right? All the testing was done on men. They would take a 140 pound man, call it equivalent to a female and say, oh, that's how it's going to work in the female body. <sighs> Why wouldn't they use women? Because, I'll get into this later, but this is your body throughout the month. Day one, day 14, day 28. Day one is the first day of your period, right? That's when the cycle on average starts. But your body, look at that. Here versus here versus here. It's different. It's different. Susan, you never, you never knew that and you graduated from pharmacy school in 1980. Yes. Yes, Susan. All, the, all these studies. Google it, lady. Google it. <laughs> Seriously. So your body is different literally every week of the month. So that means that if you're going to do a study and really, really dive into how the effect of anything, whether it be nutrition or exercise or uh, a medication of some kind affects the female body, you can't just do a four week study because you'd be getting four different bodies. You have to do it and do it long enough so that you're getting a good measurement week to week about a month apart. Oh, because men's bodies stay the same. Yes, men wake up with the same amount of testosterone and stuff pretty much every day. Mm -hmm. Doesn't really change. Yeah. And the effect of testosterone on the body makes it very different, right? So when we're looking at all this other information out there, start to really plant that seed in your mind of when you see things out there and you see articles and like shocking headlines and those things like, Oh my gosh, this weight loss, blah, 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 right? Just think all the information where that's coming from is from men. Mm -hmm. Yes. So from the next book that I'm working on, so I'm in the middle of working on my next book, um, which is Nutrition for Female Athletes. And I'm really diving into nutrition training and all that other stuff. And maybe I'll do another <laughs> video or event like this. If you guys want, let me know. You can comment and let me know um, if you're interested in something like that in a little bit. I got to get through more of the, more of the layout of it first. Um, but uh, nutrition timing for working out athletes to optimize hormones and your activity level. All kind of blended into one. Um, and 
really funny, really funny story. <sighs> Hilarious. Uh, the uh, effect of nutrition on athletes, not studied on women at all. Even today, even today, when they study nutrition effects on performance, they use male division one athletes ages 18 to 22. So if that's not you, then all the information that they're talking about isn't really meant for you, Ooh, right? Can you see steam coming out of my ears? Like a little cartoon steam, right? <sighs> see, I'm starting to sweat right now. This is how worked up I get. So the entire nutrition for uh, uh, performance in athletes, women are not included. Um, are men running these studies? <laughs> Sheila, I will put a lot of money down. That yes, men are the ones running these studies. There's a gal, her name's St uh, Stacy Sims. She's a PhD. She's a female who actually runs some studies and actually studies the effect of hydration and stuff for women and the body and things like that. Um, but so when we talk about, let me back up again and circle back to the to the pharmaceuticals. 1993, there was a law that passed that said women could actually take part in pharmaceutical studies. Mm, weird. Mm, okay. So then women became a part of studies, but still not a major enough. Uh, population of a study to skew any of the results. So of a population of a, doing any type of research for medications, they'd be like 5% of the sample group, which isn't enough to skew any data or results when you're looking at research and what they really see. That's easy to say that's an outlier. Oh, technically there were some females in there. Yeah, three out of a hundred. <laughs> Give me a break, right? And they, the reason they do that, again, it, it takes longer then. It takes a lot longer and it's way more expensive to study medications for the female body. I think it was 2014 or 2015 when um, the company that makes Ambien, they were forced to go back and gender test the effects of their medication for men and women. And they found that women need less than half the dose of the medication than men do. What that means is a, a, same, a male and a female, same height, same weight, everything else, Women need less than half the dose for the medication to be as effective because their body chemistry and physiology is different. That means that women, the, and the reason why they had to go back and gender test is because so many women were complaining about side effects and being groggy and all those other things. They were getting any complaints from men. Weird. Oh, weird. So they go back then and gender specific test and they find, oh, look at that. Men need this much. Women need half as much. Hmm. So that's, again, that's the pharmaceutical industry, which is way more regulated than the nutrition industry. Way more regulated. You can have <laughs> anybody come out and say anything about nutrition, right? Now, of course, when I start talking about nutrition, the angle that I take is from either research, but of course, the, the stuff that I talk about when we get into the warming and the cooling here, um, I, I, it comes from Eastern medicine. So this isn't stuff that I came up with. This isn't something, whatever. I, I just... Do dove into research, Ayurvedic, Eastern medicine, Chinese medicine, and, and really un, you know, unearthed these things. And I'm bringing it here and, and making it more well-known and saying, hey, this is how this works with your body. Um, you know, this is how it affects you and how you can benefit by shifting things a little bit to get a better outcome you know, in, in more of a scientific way, if that makes sense. So, so I want you to be open to some of these new concepts because what you've read I don't want to say that it's wrong or bad. It's just not meant for you. It's not meant for you. It wasn't written for you. But of course, women are the ones <laughs> that are reading all this stuff. When you look at a nutrition label, um, any type of, this is, I was just going to, uh, oh, here we go. Again, my kids, so this is just sitting by me because my kids love these. These are Gingins. This is not an ad for Gingins. I just, they are really good. Little ginger candies that help with digestion. Um, on the back of every food product, there's going to be a label. Labels are created and the percentages and everything are made for a 44 year old healthy male. So if you are not a 44 year old healthy male, it's not necessarily for you, right? They don't even give height or weight specific information. It's about a 2000 calorie diet for a 44 year old healthy male. It doesn't talk about what happens if you're under stress. It doesn't talk about if you're a female. Nope. So again, all this information, not that it's bad or wrong, it's just not meant for you. So no wonder why you've struggled. No wonder why you feel like you've been led astray. No wonder why you've been, you know, pulling your hair out or killing yourself at the gym or starving yourself. I chatted with a gal this week who told me that the only diet she went on that worked for her 
um, she cried herself to sleep because she was so hungry. Yeah, I have amazing stories from women in terms of the struggles that they have gone through. I, I've I can't even tell you how many women I've chatted with that have told me that they go into the doctor because they're like, I am exercising, I am work, I am getting to the gym and I'm eating clean. Like I am eating so healthy, yet nothing is coming off. None of my weight is coming off. And they get recommended to be put on an antidepressant and then to go see a therapist because instead of thinking that there's something that they can need help with, the, the doctor tells them that they're just crazy and it's in their head. What? I honestly, like, that is maddening. Maddening. Like, they don't believe that. I'm like, are you kidding me? So I don't know if any of you watching this right now or listening to this later have had that type of experience where you're like, oh, mad face. Yes, total mad face. That where you're like, this is insane. Like going in, trying to get help, trying to reach out and trying to find something different, but yet being told that you're crazy and it's in your head. What? Oh my gosh. Oh, um, you were taught dosages. There was never a difference between male and female only body weight. Wow. Yes, Susan. Oh yeah. The pharmaceutical. Yeah. Difference. Yeah. So my point with all this is that your female physiology is different. You have a different body every week. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and there's so many wonderful things you can do to work with it and stop fighting against it. Um, and that all the stuff that you've tried, again, not that it's bad and you didn't screw up and don't, don't feel bad about it, but I want to be and introduce you to new ideas in terms of, hey, this is where you can go from this. These are things you can apply. Start trying right now today. Start trying tomorrow to really improve your health. My goal and mission is to educate women and empower them to take your health into your own hands and move it forward. That's, that's what I want to do. I want to make sure that you are able to apply a lot of these nutrition basics really to get you the best result. Now I'm going to touch on some things specifically for weight loss um, and how that works and how you know, metabolism and things like that. But again, if you have questions or want me to like deep dive into something else, let me know. I'll go there. Um, but sometimes I go on a little down a rabbit hole per se. Um, and I don't want to get too lost down there. So yes. All right. But again, if you want to know more about the history of nutrition, first chapter of my book, I'm going to cover it again, history of nutrition for female athletes and stuff in my next book. So stay tuned for that. Okay. Overall, when we talk about nutrition, look at all this stuff I had to write on my whiteboard. It's like covering my whole whiteboard because we're going to go into it. Okay. Nutrition information. This is not about calories. This is not about cutting anything out. The female body in, in short... I've done podcasts on keto and other things like that where you cut out a nutrient group or you're cutting something down. If you cut out a nutrient group or you're cutting down calories or you're restricting in any way, the female body will see that as a stressor. Our bodies react to stress by storing fat. It turns on this switch that says, hey, whatever you get in, I'm going to store it. You eat a piece of celery, I'm going to store it. Mm-hmm. So really good at that. Really good. Men and women are just totally different. We gain weight differently, lose weight differently, build muscle differently. It's all very different. And I'm going to talk about more of those details as we get into the hormone piece more. But keep that in mind as you're, you know, going through this is that all these other fad diets and things that are out there. If you're like, oh my gosh, my husband did this and lost weight really, really quickly. Well, of course. <laughs> so easy for them. But... When you look at nutrition, you've got protein, fat, and carb. These are the three main nutrient groups that you need to focus on. Again, not about calorie. It's about nutrition and getting enough nutrients. So many women are overfed and undernourished, meaning you're, not, you're worried about the calories, but you're not getting enough fuel into your body day to day. So the reason this is so important is that this is going to be the basic and the foundation for building your metabolism. There's a lot of women that when they start my 12 week program, we have to go through what's a, what's called the reverse dieting protocol. Yeah. Actually fixing and healing the metabolism, actually fixing and healing the gut, actually working on food sensitivities, things like that, that your body has basically gotten super pissed off about. So it's not functioning correctly. Your body has to function better when your body is healthy and functioning better. Then you can move on to the weight loss. I get so frustrated. There's another gal that I worked with in the, um, in my 12 week program and we really worked with fertility and weight loss and, and getting her cycle regulated. And her thing was, is that her doctor told her that he wouldn't start fertility meds or anything with her until she lost at least 30 pounds. 
And she's like, okay. So of course she started starving herself and all these other things. And naturally that didn't work. Duh. And she got frustrated and she felt really bad. And I was like, no, let's get, let's, you know, she had gut issues, leaky gut issues, some other stuff. So we worked on getting her gut better, healthier, stronger, um, getting her healthier, getting her stamina up. And then it was amazing her result, you know, that she was able to start really losing weight consistently and making big progress, but it didn't start there, right? It wasn't about just the weight loss. Let's get you healthy first, you know? That's the foundation. So this is the foundation of a healthy metabolism. Protein, fat, and carb. Eat carbs. Carbs are important. Carbs are important for energy. Your brain runs off of carbs and sugars. Mm -hmm. You need this. Carbs do shift and change, and I will talk about um, stress and how your body handles uh, how much carb your body needs when it's under stress. Menopause, that your body actually processes carb differently when you're going through perimenopause and menopause. So I have a whole program, a 12-week program for women in menopause because of that. The carb is different, so that's they get a better result when you're processing that carb differently. Um, but carb, when you're looking at this, you get energy from carbs for about one hour. You're going to get energy there. Um, Ooh, good carbs. Yes. So overall you're looking at health, you know, like whole foods, whole food carbs, right? Uh, oatmeal, quinoa, rice, potatoes, you know, things like that. Fruit, fruit is a healthy carb as well. Um, and, and having a variety of them, not just sticking through one another. Again, I had a conversation this week with the gal. She's like, I can't tell you when the last time I had a piece of fruit because it's bad for me. I was told it was bad for me and I can't eat carbs. And I was like, Oh Lord. Oh, I was like, well, this is going to change your life when you start eating carbs again and you have fruit <laughs> getting all those nutrients in your body. Um, but you're going to burn through the energy from carb in about an hour. And again, some of this is going to depend on, you know, how fast your metabolism is, that type of a thing. So if you have a little faster metabolism or if you're working out hard, say you're training for a half marathon or something, you might go through this a little bit faster than others. Keep that in mind. Protein, you burn through in about two to three hours. Can you guys see that? I want to make sure you can see this. Two to three hours. And then that energy from protein is gone. Fats, you get energy from fats for about four hours. So this is really, really important to keep track of. And, and when I tell people that they need to eat every two to three hours um, and that you need to eat five to six meals a day, oh my gosh, that's a lot. Yes, that's <laughs> you need to eat a lot and you need to eat a lot of food and fuel. Um, so because if you're not eating, if you're eating, say every three hours, you've burned through your carb, you're getting energy from the protein and you've also still got energy from the fat and then you refuel yourself, right? Before you get, let your gas tank get less than a, you know, get down to empty and in that red zone, you're filling it back up again. You're not letting it dwindle. You're not letting it go down. That fuels your metabolism and makes it work harder for you. Like I said, it is not about having a glass of wine that makes you gain weight. It is not about having a cupcake or a piece of chocolate. Well, I eat a piece of chocolate once a week, so that's maybe why I can't lose weight. No, no, it's not it. If your body is working hard enough for you, you will burn that off. It's, that's not the problem, seriously. So this is the basic right here, and this is something that not enough people know about. Now, there's a lot of ways that you can get this in. I do recommend a variety of proteins, especially for women. There's certain amino acids that are only found in beef and pork products or milk, dairy, pork products. And if you can't eat dairy or you don't eat pork, you're going to need to supplement with some type of amino acid to round that out because, and I'll talk about this more later, when your body's under stress, it doesn't create some of the natural amino acids that it should. So it's harder to build muscle and it's harder to maintain that. So keep that in mind. Um, a variety of proteins, healthy fats. Um, you know, so proteins can be plant-based proteins. They can be animal proteins either way. Healthy fats, olive oil, coconut oil, avocado, avocado oil, you know, sunflower oil, nuts, seeds, all that good stuff. Great. And then the carbs we already talked about. But if you do that, I mean, if you're not doing that right now and not eating this way in a patterned way, and, and think about it in an easy way of breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner. Right, I know I'm going through this kind of fast, so let me know if you guys have questions or want me to spend more time here. Um, but that's five meals a day, eating every two to three hours, doing that alone. And I know it seems like a lot of food. I, I have gals who will look at my meal plan, my 12-week meal plan, and be like, mm -mm, I'm terrified to eat that much food. And I'm like, I totally get it. I totally get that that could be 
you know, a fear thing because you've restricted so much of that all before in your life. But we have to repair this part of your body. We have to repair and, and get your metabolism going again. And this is the way to do it. And that's amazing. You teach your body how to burn the fuel that you're taking in. Whole new result. Oh my God, you're going to get so much energy when you start doing this. It's amazing. Whew. All right. So now you know about like the basics of what to eat and everything. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, now we're going to talk about hormones specifically. This is something we don't learn enough about as females, right? We get that one class in fifth grade where they separate the boys and the girls and they talk about how your body works. And then other than that, you don't really know and they don't really spend any time on this. They don't educate you on your own physiology, your own biology, right? You get information from like TV commercials or movies. Mm -hmm. where they sugarcoat things or pretend like it's sunshine and rainbows, right? Or you may have like a friend who has an older sister who will tell you somewhat half-truths on information, right? Because they don't really know either other than what they've experienced. So when we look at hormones, it's really important to understand how your body works and functions. 28-day cycle is average. Yours naturally may be longer or shorter, right? And I'll, I'll touch on birth control and menopause and other things like that in just a minute. So keep that in mind if you're having questions on that already. Um, so th this can be a little bit different for everybody because every body is different, but I'm going to use this on average just because it's easier to go through. Um, day 14 is about when you ovulate. So that's a big key point there. And when things shift day one is the first day of your period. So that's, that's the day one here. Um, after the first couple of days, right, hormones are pretty low for a few days, and then they, estrogen really starts to rise. Estrogen is really dominant until about the time that you ovulate. Again, this is a, an example. Some women actually are shifted a little bit here or here. Some women, this is shifted here and here. If you've gone through some hormone traumas and everything else, um, you know, your hormones can be shifted one way or another. If you're estrogen dominant, it can really cause some different effects as well. So it's really, really uh, different. Um, Nanette, you're asking, you are in a very credible, good program for women. They had you eating a lot of food five, six times a day. Yep. And you, won, you gained so much weight back. You believe they were doing was good. Wonder if you weren't working out enough for eating that much food. That can depend. And it can depend on how long you were doing that and whether or not they really taken you through the reverse diet process. Cause that's something different too. That's probably what they were trying to do. Um, but yeah, so I'll, again, I'll put that link below, but that would be a great thing for us to chat about. Um, and we can talk about exactly what that was for you um, and maybe, maybe where some, like, you know, the fill in the gaps, we'll say, um, on something like that. Yes. Um, okay. So hormones about, right, shifting and changing here. When estrogen is higher in this phase here, you're going to get more energy. Estrogen, whew, when, it's, when it's in the right balance, right, and there's no balance of your hormones. People talking about, oh, get your hormones balanced. If you ever see a supplement that's going to balance your hormones and you take it the same every day, no, don't believe it. Don't believe it. That's not how your hormones work. It's <laughs> not how they work. It ebbs and flows. It should be different. Lean into that difference because that's how your body naturally works. And it's going to work even better when you work with it and stop fighting it. So estrogen. When it's in the right balance in this ebb and flow, um, you're going to get more energy. You are going to notice that you're going to get more energy throughout the day, have more mental clarity. You're going to perform better in your workouts. It's going to be a faster recovery. So a lot of gals will notice, whoo, I am killing it right now. Look at me. I'll use running as an example. I, I ran this five miles and it was a breeze. It went by really fast. Wow. Look at me go. I recovered really well within a day. Pfft, that was nothing. I'm getting so fit. Yay. Yay. When our cycles are all over the place, how can we figure out? Ooh, ah, excellent question, Sheila. Yes, I'll go over that. So everything's increased there. Increased metabolism. Estrogen brings up the energy, you know, brings up that fuel and everything else. And it's just going to increase your metabolism overall. It's fantastic. Also increases muscle building. So if you want to lean out, right? If you want to get some more muscle and really lean out, the big key is that you have to gain a few pounds of muscle at least, right? That turns on that fat burning mode in your body. And this is a big piece for women. They'll focus on losing weight or dropping calories. Oh my God, I was talking to somebody today. 
And they were like, yeah, I did this thing and I lost 30 pounds in four weeks. And I was like, oh my God, are you, were you okay? Like, were you sick? Do you know what happens when you have a really wet, rapid weight loss like that? Your body is at a certain set point here, right? And that's your weight, right? All of a sudden, very quickly, you lose weight. How you do that is by attacking the muscle tissue and decreasing muscle mass. Sure, you might like have the scale go down, but muscle weighs more than fat too. Ugh! So scale goes down and your body, that's too fast of a change. And especially for women, when you make a really fast change, what happens to your body, it sees it as stress. And now it's not only gonna gain that weight back, it's gonna gain it right back. It's gonna say, you know what? I'm gonna make sure this doesn't happen again. So I'm gonna add a few pounds. Oh, there we go. You're welcome because now I'm protecting you. That's what it does. Mm -hmm. Yes. So keep that in mind that this muscle building is essential and it works best and it's easiest to do during this phase, during the estrogen phase. It, it can happen during the progesterone phase, but it just, it's, it's way easier during that estrogen phase. You're, you're just going to feel, but once you start paying attention to this, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, it really is different. Wow. Okay. Other fancy thing about estrogen that everybody loves. Estrogen burns carbs naturally. Yeah. Burns carbs naturally. Just, we'll go through carbs. Yeah. So when we talk about weight loss tactics, oh, carb cycling, you incorporate carb cycling. So that's part of my 12 week program that I take people through all this nutrition stuff and we focus on hormones and everything else, but we also go through carb cycling and we do it at a time and we do it at, at, at increments that are beneficial for the female body. There are males who will eat carb and do carb cycling and they're eating like 400 grams of carb a day. If you take a female who's been really careful about carbs and eating like 50 grams of carb a day to try and doing 400, she'll explode. Her stomach will explode, one. And two, her body will shut down and freak out because it's not good, right? And then that sees it as a stressor and it stores it all. Yay, right? You're gonna hear me probably say that a lot this, today. Your body stresses out, it's gonna store everything. So don't make your body stressed out. <laughs> So, but incorporating carb cycling and at the right increment for the female body gives you an amazing result. Teaches your body how to burn carbs, works with leptin and ghrelin, these other hormones in your body that control your hunger and feeling satisfied. It's a whole different feeling to wake up in the morning and get this, you know, nutrient in your body and then to not feel starving, right? To feel like, oh, I'm, this is going really, really well. I'm, I'm not having these crazy cravings anymore. I don't get super hangry. Mm -hmm. Yes, because you're working with these specific hormones in a completely different way. So that is estrogen right here. When we slip into the progesterone phase, right? You ovulate, things slip over. Your basal body temperature also is higher here too. I'll talk about that more with the warming and cooling, um, about how, to, how that fits in and again, aligns with it really nicely. Progesterone is a whole different beast. Progesterone is going to decrease your energy. As you go along here, you may feel like you're getting the energy just sucked right out of you. It literally means progestation. Progesterone is progestation. So your body is preparing to house a viable pregnancy every month, whether or not it's there. It's just getting ready. It's just preparing just in case. You're welcome. Oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. Yay. Um, are the trackers really calculated correctly for females or males? Trackers, Beck, do you mean trackers for like app tracking and apps and stuff like that? Um, let me know if it's like an app that you're talking about. Um, so progesterone changes, decreases your energy, slows everything down. It's going to take longer to recover from workouts and things like that. So that same, that five miles that you ran here and you're feeling amazing about and feeling like, whoo, get so fit. You do that five miles here. It is going to be struggle bust the whole time. You are going to be dragging. You're going to be slower and you're going to feel it. Feel like your legs are lead. And you're going to be like, what is going on? What did I do wrong here? Where did I screw up in my training? Or, oh, and then you're gonna be sore way longer. You're not gonna recover as well from that. Again, there's things that, you know, again, I go through with women in my program and stuff where we talk about how to get around that and how to get your body going again more and recover faster in the progesterone phase. But just know that if you like look back at some of your training or if you're experiencing some of that and you're like, dang it, oh, I suck now. Oh, because women do this. We do this today. <laughs> Should I like your workout today? <laughs> Ah, yes, right? <laughs> Sometimes it is just going to be tougher. 
keep that in mind. I, I do that too, where sometimes I'm going to the gym and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna kill it. And I'm halfway through a set and I'm like, why is this so hard? Ugh. I'm like, and I look around, I'm like, no one else is struggling. Like I feel like I'm struggling. What is happening? It's just your hormones. Just, just your hormones. <laughs> just know that in a couple of weeks, it's gonna be much easier. <laughs> Just power through it, that type of a thing, right? It, it, but it, it's not you, right? You're not doing anything wrong. It's just where your body's at and how it naturally responds and reacts. Very, very normal, yes. So energy is down, recovery is gonna be down. Your metabolism, can you guys see this okay? Let me know if you can't see this. I'm gonna try and adjust that. Your metabolism also decreases at this point too. Because everything slows down. Your digestive system slows down at this point because it's trying to absorb every possible nutrient from the food that you eat. So it just slows things down, yay. So there's things that you can do, again, to speed that up and help work with that, because you don't want it to be slow. Slow gut is slow metabolism. And then it also increases that muscle breakdown. So when you want to be lean and tone and all that other stuff, and you may feel like, God, I'm not really building as much right now. Why does this feel different right now? progesterone, right? It's not you. <laughs> it's the progesterone phase. Ugh. So keeping that in mind, a lot of times it may feel like you're making more progress with your fitness during this phase than this phase. Totally normal. But the one thing that progesterone does that people seem to enjoy is that it actually can get you into a fat burning mode easier. Now again, provided that you're getting the right nutrition in, provided that your metabolism is going. The reason it can get you into a fat burning mode is because your basal body temperature is higher at this point. You're increasing that thermogenic reaction that occurs and that fat cells have the opportunity to be used and burned. Doesn't mean it absolutely will, it's just the opportunity for it. So that's a big thing to tap into. So how we tap into that more is we go through intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting for women, that's different than a lot of the information out there. We do it specifically for the female physiology so it does not break down your body in a negative way. Important to keep that in mind. Okay. Um, Beck, I'm gonna answer your question in just a minute. When we talk about if you're under stress, when we talk about that's high cortisol levels, if you're on birth control or menopause or all these other things, you still have hormones present in your body, it's just on a smaller scale, okay? Stress will actually pull these hormones and completely make your hormones go out of whack. It will cause hormone dysfunction. If you're stressed out, it can mess up your cycle, even if you're on birth control or something like that, right? <sighs> stress is so great. But know that you can still work with and tap into the natural ebb and flow. And if you're not sure where you're at or if your cycle is all over the place, whether it be from stress or something else, you can also start at a certain spot and use your nutrition to imprint on your hormones. Your body is impressionable and your hormones. So for those of you, so I, I, I'm an athlete, right? I played on a lot of different teams, lived with girls in college, all this stuff, right? When you're around a group of females for a certain period of time, right? It doesn't take very long for you guys to link up with all your cycles, right? Because your hormones are impressionable. So you can imprint on your hormones using your nutrition to help keep it regular. That's how I actually started with all of this. I started with women using this tactic for their fertility to regulate their cycles and help with ovulation. Crazy, right? So it's amazing. Um, yes, okay, at least that's a good question. So you can work with this to get in a good cycle. There was a gal that I worked with in my 12-week program. Amazing. She had, <laughs> poor thing, at the time she had 18-month-old twin boys. <laughs> Bless her heart. Oh, and she was like, oh, I'm tired all the time. I was like, dude, you have twin boys. You have 18 month old twin boys. Of course you're tired. She's like, well, no, I know I'm tired from that. You know, the sleep thing. She's like, but no, I'm like, like fatigued, exhausted. And she's like, the thing that makes me crazy is that my cycle, she's like, it used to be like 29 or 30 days and it's 19 to 21 days now since I had my twins and since my period came back. It's just, it's so short. And it, she goes, I feel like I'm going crazy with it. And I was like, okay. So we started working with this. We really implemented the nutrition for hormones to get her cycle more regular. And so we're also going to talk about timing for men versus with women because this is important here. It doesn't happen right away. But within the second phase of things for her, she called me one day and she was like, 27 days. 
days. It's 27 days. My cycle's 27 days. Oh my God, I feel so much better, right? It just regulated for her and it started becoming on a regular pattern and her body became aware of that. And she was just using her nutrition to imprint on her body. So, so it's very, very important. Um, so when we talk about, for her, it was into her second month. So her, going into her second round, which is a fast, which is a fast response. I will let you guys know that. Fast response for sure. Um, a lot of women, when we talk about results and what to expect, you're, you're looking at at least 12 weeks or three months. That's the reason my 12 week program is 12 weeks. It takes 12 weeks or three months to really make a full imprint on your body's hormones. It would be so great if it happened sooner than that. So great. But it just doesn't. From the time of like egg creation to release and all these other things and the cycle of hormones in the body, it's three months. If you've been ever put on a thyroid medication or something, it's three months that they check things. Vitamin D levels takes three months because vitamin D is a hormone. It takes three months to upload in your body. It's not specific just for these two hormones. It's with all hormones in the body. So if you're going to be making any type of shift and change in nutrition, it's important that you're doing it for... 12 weeks. <laughs> so 12 weeks is essential. 12 week is that, that, that mark. Now 12 weeks is a minimum for that to work. And that's a minimum. If you're healthy, that's a minimum. If you don't have a history of a lot of trauma or thyroid issues or extreme stress. Right. And I say trauma and that can be, I had a C-section and then had infection in there and then they had to go in and clean it out again. And then I had ovarian cysts after that and da 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 da. Right. Like it doesn't have to be like, I got a car accident trauma. This is like, you just have some stuff you worked through. Some rough stuff you worked through. Um, okay, should intermittent fasting only be done in the progesterone phase? No, you can do intermittent fasting. Um, and there, again, I take women through this. Depending on your body and what you're ready for um, will depend on the type and phase and where we put in intermittent fasting. But oftentimes I recommend intermittent fasting, at least to start here, just to be a little more effective. You can do it here, but it may feel different here. Right, but again, your metabolism, your body is burning things differently at this point than it is over here. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, but where I start people and then where I recommend them often depends on how your body reacts and responds, um, which is also why it's nice because then I, when I work with women, because I get to get you on the right track and then make sure you're progressing as quickly as possible and you're not overdoing it or underdoing it. Because if you're overdoing it, you can set yourself back quite a bit. Yes. Um, fat burning, but harder to work out. Sheila. Yes. Right. Progesterone. Okay. Yes. Back the, the apps. Yes. So in talking about this and before I dive into the warming and the cooling and how to specifically target estrogen progesterone to make these function and work better when you track your food and everything, and I have people track their food and look at what they eat. But again, I mostly talk about getting enough nutrient in overall, but if you're tracking it in my fitness pal, they'll either focus it on calories, which I don't remember. I don't, I mean, I don't like calories. Look at me. I can't even talk because I don't like calories so much. Don't count calories. That's just dumb. Count nutrients, but they want to count calories and keep it within that. And then they'll want to do a percentage. Oh, it's, you know, uh, 40, 30, 20 or something. Is that right? That's not even a hundred. <laughs> or a 40, a 40, 40, 20, 40 protein, 40 carb, 20 fat. Oh, that's the perfect ratio, blah, 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 blah. And then that's the same every day of the month. You know what? There may be some days that that's okay. But there's going to be other days where you're going to need more fat. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's really, really important that you are getting the right nutrient for your body. Did you know that when you're in the progesterone phase, little nugget right here for you, your body needs at least 300 to 500 more calories a day than it does over here. This is why women get, I just spit, I got so excited. You can wipe that off the screen there for a second, sorry. Um, <laughs> this is why women get cravings. This is why we get PMS. This is why we feel sometimes because our bodies aren't being fueled correctly because you need more here. You need more. Your body needs more. It is doing a lot of things on a cellular level. A lot is happening there. A lot. Along with the other repair and rejuvenation that happens and the other, every other system in the body. But you need more calorie and nutrient here. So if you're not getting yourself more here, it's going to literally tell your body that's a stressful state for you. 
Yep. And then that, guess what? Guess what happens? You store everything and it keeps you from losing weight. Yay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So going through a phasic style of eating is so important on a lot of different levels for women. When your body needs more, feed it more. It's going to respond so much better for you. You're going to get more energy. You're going to have better recovery then. These are the little things that make a big difference in your outcome, in your health, and getting to your results without feeling like you're crazy. Again, a lot of women feel like they're crazy. Like, oh, I don't feel good. Or I feel like I need more. I ate all my calories today. I, I did my 40, you know, my 40, 40, 20. Ooh, it doesn't feel right. It shouldn't. It shouldn't. You have a different body, right? I'm hoping right now some light bulbs are going off for you. You're like, bing, oh my God. Another thing, if you're having light bulbs throughout this whole thing, this event is going on and it'll be available afterwards, please tag a friend in this. Please tag someone that you know or that you've had a conversation with in the past few weeks about something that's frustrated you. Again, my mission is to empower women and educate women on these things because this is something I believe that we should be introduced to right from the get-go, <laughs> not waiting and feeling stuck and frustrated with. Mm! Okay, I gotta calm down so I can go through the rest of the info. <laughs> um, yes, hopefully that answered your question in terms of tracking apps. You got me on a tangent and got me sweaty again though, Beck. Thank you, Beck. All right. Cooling. So when we're talking about foods for estrogen, how we want estrogen to work better, how we want to work with our bodies more in estrogen phase. Um, I need more water. Cooling phase. So, um, ooh, explains why you lost weight, but your body mass went up slightly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Um, another thing too, if you're looking at measurements and weights, before I get into this, before I forget about this, Tracking and apps and things like that and tracking the scale when we talk about men and women losing weight differently Women will have better energy better sleep first Then you'll have a change in your measurements. Oh look I lost weight just below my boobs and Then my you know belly button area and then my hips and my thighs, right? It kind of works itself down Very different from men who they sneeze and fart and step on the scale and they lost five pounds Seriously, that's like a thing Ugh. Women, it's, it's very, very different. And if you're measuring yourself, you have to weigh yourself, weigh yourself at day, let's say day 10. Don't measure yourself until day 10 again. Otherwise you're measuring a different body. You're measuring a different body. It's not the same. It's really not. If you're stepping on a scale, that's one of those like body fat percentage things, blah, blah, blah. Don't, please don't, don't do it. You know why, you know why you shouldn't do it. You shouldn't do it because those things are made and tested on men. Ooh, they don't take into account your boobs or your butt where you're supposed to have fat. Ooh, I mean, I don't, I don't really have a lot here. I mean, I nursed three babies. I would think that I would have more to show for it, but I don't. But still, it does not take these things into account when measuring body fat percentage. It will count those. And some of that's just going to be there. I mean, come on, right? <laughs> so don't, don't, I mean, those things are not accurate. Plus, as you go through, oh, as you go through different phases of bodies that you have throughout the month, guess what? Your blood volume is going to be more here. Is that going to throw off? So more fluid, literally more fluid, more blood volume in your body, circulating throughout your system, just everywhere. I'm doing a lot of crazy movements with my arms right now <laughs> to calm down. So guess what? That, that's going to throw off. If you're overhydrated or under, underhydrated, it throws off your, you know, when you do that measurement, the body fat percentage measurement. Yeah. So if you're measuring here, it's going to throw it off right there. Seriously right? Because you have more blood volume. This isn't like you being over or under hydrated. Your body just does it. Ooh. Yes. Karen. Um, <laughs> Stephanie, you're killing me right now. <laughs> Sorry, Stephanie. I get super fired up and I just, ooh. you're 43 years old, new mom. You have an 18 month old boy. You're lean and carry a fair amount of muscle. Looking to get pregnant again. Your cycle is 38 days or even more. Something to stay away from right now. Uh, excellent question, Karen. And the short answer is going to be yes, but I'm going to, again, I'll put a link below where you can schedule a call with me um, and we will chat about that because some, it depends, but um, working with your cycle and really focusing on ovulation and boosting this can help, you know, get and keep pregnant. That's the 
sort of Eastern medicine philosophy for everything. Um, sometimes intermittent fasting can be helpful, but it, it depends. So I'll put that link below and then we can chat about that specifically. Yes. You wish laughter made us lose weight. That would be great too, right? Or again, like a, like a guy, like you can just like sneeze and fart and maybe go to the bathroom. Oh look, I lost 10 pounds. Good for me. <sighs> That's my husband to a T, by the way. Like, he's a brick mason. Like, he's a wonderful human. Like, he's just, he's a wonderful human. Very supportive, very smart, right? All this stuff. <sighs> but it kills me because if he works, if he works too hard and if he doesn't eat enough, he just starts to lose weight. Like, it just falls off of him. And then he's like, oh, shoot, I, I gotta eat more in the next few days. Let me go get two extra, two pints of Ben and Jerry's. Yes, sweetheart, let's take care of that for you. <laughs> I mean, I love you. So we all go through it, right? Right? Why is it like that? I mean, oh, okay. So men and weight, gaining and losing weight, very different. Women will get energy and sleep first. Measurements will change. Um, all that other stuff. Energy has to be up still. Um, and, then, and then the scale may change, right? And it's just really different. And as you go along in a weight loss progression to like the first five, 10 pounds, losing that is very different than the last five or 10 pounds. And you have a completely different body. And then you get a different body every week of the month. And it's so, ugh, where it really takes different tactics to get to and then maintain your goal. Again, not that it's hard and it's not about starving yourself. I mean, most women, when they look at my program, they're literally like, oh my God, I have to eat that much? Mm -hmm. Yes, we're gonna teach your body to burn it. We're gonna get your metabolism working for you. So, so different, so different. But again, a lot of times women are looking at a scale or measurement and measuring it against something that's not realistic. You know, you shouldn't expect to lose weight within the first week. You know what I mean? If you do great, but really for the, your body to actually lose fat mass and keep it off, which is the other thing, that's what I take people through a 12 week program for. If you're going to lose that fat mass, you're going to keep it off. That's what we want. We want a lasting result. I want you having to go through this over and over and over again. That's stressful on the body, which makes you gain more weight. Yes. So it's, it's a very, very different process for men versus women. Okay. Now I'm <clears throat> circling back around here to the cooling foods, cooling foods for estrogen that help with everything estrogen. Um, so again, this is the Eastern medicine philosophy of it. It is chicken, turkey, fish. Those are cooling proteins. Now, it, you can't, you don't have to eat and just stick to this. Um, can you talk about stress and adaptogens? You have an enormous amount of stress, um, and you know it gets in your way. Yes, I will share an excellent question. I will chat about stress here um, next. Um, excellent, excellent, though. So other things, you know, and I over here, I have, like, beef written here. That doesn't mean that you can't eat beef here. It just means that you can overall using the tone of these foods. That's the other thing I love about eating this way is that it's not restrictive. It's not super strict. It's not exclusive of you have to eat this food at this time of day when the moon is just right in the sky and then it will work for you. No, like just get the, get the nutrient in your body. Like I don't care how you cook it. You know, I mean, don't like cook it in a pound of, you know, bacon fat or something. I mean, that would probably taste really good, but don't, you know, right? Like, let's be reasonable with it, but it's not about the exact food, you know? Restrictions suck, yes, and they're not reasonable to stay on at all. They're not reasonable to stay on. That's not a lifestyle you can maintain. If you're gonna get to and keep a result, part of it's lifestyle and part of it's getting your body there, and, and we work on both. So in terms of restriction, it's more about, okay, let's look at your day and let's look at your week right? Are you, are you doing things that are more cooling than warming? Great. Then you are working with that hormone. You're working with estrogen. Super duper. That's, that's all you got to look at. Just that snapshot of what's the tone of your overall day. If you really want to focus on fertility and some things like that, then you can tighten up on it more. Great. But overall, again, so does it, can it only be these things? No, but these are more cooling, you know, cooling foods, cooling toned foods. All right. Raw fruits and vegetables, very cooling. Ice water, right? Any, any liquid that's room temperature or cooler, you know, is, um, cooling. And then rosemary, dill, mint, thyme, right? So uh, an easy thing that you can do in the, in these phases here, when you're looking at 
nutrition um, and hydration. I, I like to take my water and put like cucumber slices and mint in my water. And then there you go. You are now having cooling, cooling water that you're drinking all day long. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. Now switch that over into warming. Beef and bacon, bacon, right? It's exciting. Um, that is very, very warming. So bring more heat into the body. Cooked fruits and vegetables. Does everything have to be cooked? No. And when I say cooked fruits, I don't mean pie. Um, coffee, tea, caffeine is warming. Uh, spices, you know, anything spicy, right? Anything that's going to bring heat into the body. Work with that basal body temperature that's higher there. Keep that going. That's going to help get you and stay in a fat burning zone easier. Again, as long as your metabolism is working for you. And then dairy, also warming. But again, does this mean you can't have dairy here? No. Just make it more of a cooling tone. Or again, work it into your day. Like, how does your whole day look? Is your whole day cooling, but you're going to have some Greek yogurt? Great. Great. You know what I mean? Here in my water, I like to do, you know, room temperature or warmer, right? But room temperature, then water. And I'll put slices of fresh ginger and lemon. Warming. Right there. And it's really good for your digestive system. It's very cleansing, all this stuff. So it's really easy to just shift the tone of your food for what your body's doing. Now, and you can do this with kids, right? Like I have three kids and I eat this way. You know, we do tacos a lot because who doesn't love tacos? When I'm in this phase here, I will do chicken tacos and I'll use like fresh cilantro on them and I won't use any spices, right? But my husband, he can put all the hot sauce on his that he wants. Over here, we'll make beef tacos and I will use, you know, peppers and spice and hot sauce. Easy. Easy ways to kind of shift what you're eating and how and just get that tone of warming versus cooling. The amazing thing is, is that once you start doing this and realizing, oh my gosh, this is where I'm at. This is how I'm going to, you know, eat for my, my cycle, and, <laughs> right? Tacos. Um, and, and use the cooling and the warming. You're like, oh my gosh, I feel different. Or you're going to start to crave these spicy foods and you're going to notice, yes, this does help my digestive system. This does help my body work and shift in a completely different way. Okay, so stress. Last thing I will, I will touch on is the stress piece of it. Stress is a bugger. It really, really is. When, you, when your body's under a lot of stress, it will actually pull from uh, the hormones here and it will cause your hormones to shift out of whack, you know, come down or come up in relation to each other. And, and when that happens, it, you know, and stress itself, it, it causes your body to store everything. It turns on fat storage and actually then targets muscle. So one of the really tough things for women, especially when you talk about things like fasted cardio or all these other things, guess what? Not meant for women. That's not meant for women. No, because that stresses our system out. And then your body turns on the fat storage and everything else. Um, if you are craving spicy foods out of your warming phase, does that mean you might have a hormone deficiency? Um, not necessarily. But good question, Julie. Again, we, that's something we should chat about. You're dying right now. Torture and too much good food talk. <laughs> yes. Um, see, stressful. This is stressful for you right now. If we're talking about a lot of good food and you're fasting. <laughs> um, but a lot of women, they kind of forget at what, what happens when their body's under stress. When your body's under chronic stress, it wears everything out. It literally causes everything to slow down. Your digestive system slows down and doesn't function as well. So you're not uploading the same amount of nutrient that you normally would upload and absorb from the food that you're eating. Your hormones aren't going to function as well. Your thyroid's not going to function as well. Which, by the way, your thyroid's in charge of your metabolism. Ugh, right? It's going to cause all these other issues. The other thing, too, in terms of what your body's craving and nutritionally will need, your brain runs off of carbs, right? We remember that, right? From the very beginning, I talked about that. Brain runs off of sugar and carbs. When your body's under stress, your brain needs more brain fuel, brain food. So it's going to what? Crave carbs. And it's going to crave quick carbs. And it's going to crave, of course, it's going to crave the crappy carbs. It's not going to be like, I crave some berries. No, <laughs> it's going to crave nachos. <laughs> well, nachos are delicious, right? course, but it's going to crave carbs that are not good for you. Straight up sugar, straight up sugar, because that's what your body really needs at that point. 
when your body's stressed out, you need to feed it and fuel your brain. So it's also important that you're pairing it with these other nutrients to help keep that going. So you're not getting that out of control. You're not getting these sugar cravings out of control, right? Yes, um, to help with cortisol levels and stress. Yes, so there's a lot of things. One, eating for nutrients, making sure you're eating for your cycle and hormones here to keep that in check so, cort so that cortisol and that stress can't throw that off as well, right? That's a good defense against that. Um, making sure you're consistently getting nutrition in, letting your body rest and recover. And then my other favorite, favorite thing is adaptogens. Oh, adaptogens are amazing. They literally, when the stress starts to offset in your body, they literally bring it down. Decrease the physical reaction and internal reaction and negative response that stress has on your body and your system. They're amazing. If you guys haven't heard of them, let me know. We can chat about them. But there's specific adaptogens too that actually target hormones too. So it's amazing. Um, did you miss covering about what to do if your cycles are all over the place? Yes, three, three to four weeks. Oh, yes. Okay, Carol, good question. So if your body's not regular, again, this depending on what it's from, so this is something we can chat about too because sometimes I'm just going to give you a general answer. For you, if I know a little bit more about you, I may be able to give you a more specific answer because if it's due to something like stress or something like that, then there would be more specific things I can tell you. But overall, following cooling here and warming here is going to help your body regulate and know, okay, now we're in the warming phase. Now we should work with that progesterone. It should be higher here. That's how it should function. Great. And then you, your period starts, boom, you start that cooling phase. That's a way to use your nutrition with your body, you know, to imprint on your hormones. That's like that gal um, that I had that I worked with in my 12 week program that her periods were 19 to 21 days. And then into her second month, it was like 27 days. And then it got better from there because she was normally 29 or 30 days. Um, so again, but just a quick example on on something there. But sometimes when you have no idea, you just, you start somewhere and you use your nutrition to imprint on your body. So yes. But again, stress can do that too. Stress can, you know, stress is this horrible thing. Stress is a very depleting, it breaks our bodies down. It breaks down our muscle tissue and everything else. And when we get into chronic stress and adrenal fatigue, you're talking about months of recovery. Months of getting your body to actually function the way that it should again. And again, these aren't things that are your fault. This isn't just, oh, I, I need to eat, you know, some coconut oil and it'll go away. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> that would be great. It really means that you need to lay down a new foundation for your nutrition. You need to give yourself more support because your body needs it. Your body needs more support. It just does. But once you give your body all this, you know, flood it with nutrient and give it more support. It's amazing the shift and change and what can happen from there. Again, don't, it's not your fault, all these other things. It's, um, don't worry about like getting stuck in a rut with stuff. It is, it is just about getting your body the nutrient it needs. So, okay, I threw a lot of info at you guys tonight. So again, I will put that link below if you want to schedule a call with me, if you guys stayed all the way till the end, if you're still listening, thank you. Um, and if you still have questions, again, and you're not comfortable commenting, if you do comment, I will still respond to the comments. If you want to invite a friend that you chat with about um, and they have questions or something, they can comment too. I'm totally open to that. Um, I'll put that link where you can schedule a call and chat with me personally or if you, you know, want more information on something. If you want more information on the 12-week program that I have about um, working with me personally one-on-one -on -one, or what that entails, you can even leave a little emoji below you know, a little like hand or say me, I want more info. And I'll, I can just send you more info and you can check it out for yourself and see if it's something you want to look into. Um, because there's a lot of options out there for women. I don't want you to ever feel like there's, there, you're a lost cause or there's no hope. There's always options and there's always things for you to try and do and different ways you can work with the body. And that's what I love educating and working with women on. So that's what I got for you guys tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you guys later.